Given this is my final Credlin program for the year, I hope you'll allow me some reflections on what's been a momentous year for our country. It has been momentous because so many of you took a very courageous step well before the polls said it was the majority view to stand against the zeitgeist and defend the principle that we are all equal before the law and that our constitution should remain colorblind. The principle that our democracy must not differentiate between citizens based on race. Now, I'm proud that the country I love stood against the power of the corporates and the sporting bodies, the, the churches and the massive megaphone of the Prime Minister and his government, and that we did the right thing by voting no. And I am really proud that my viewers, you, helped drive that result because you were brave enough to speak up in your community, down at the shops, at work or the bowling club, church, wherever you were, amongst friends and family, because those conversations you had are what delivered victory. Now, I understand now more than ever, life is a bit easier if you just keep your head down. Life is easier if you don't say what you really think, if you don't defend the things that have made this country what it is, things that the left wants to denigrate, our Judeo-Christian values, our way of life, our flag, and our history. Now, I get that. Occasionally, I read some of my own social media trolls and wonder where on earth we've got, so wrong, got things so wrong that people raised here in one of the freest and fairest, most prosperous countries on earth could be so ashamed of Australia. But then I tell myself it's, it's actually their problem, not mine. They're the gutless ones, hiding behind their keyboards with their made-up names mouthing off. They're the ones with no history or no understanding of our story and the events that have shaped us. No willingness to defend what matters. Wanting someone else to pick up the tab for their lifestyle. Not willing to be the sort of person who builds rather than tears down. My view is you, you are the people that give me faith that we can win the war against the left. Because you get that we are at an inflection point in history a genuine civilizational moment. And like me, you don't buy this lie that we should just accept, a, we should manage our decline here in Australia and elsewhere in the West. Like me, you're not prepared to go down without a fight. Indeed, you're as determined as I am to win. You are, in Menzies' words, lifters, not leaners. The people who have worked hard to get ahead, who don't want much from the government other than help with what you can't do for yourself, and if anything, you want more resilient citizens and a smaller state. You are the people that, as the voice vote showed us, are in the majority. Now, the left tried to say you weren't, but across the board, in every state, across every demographic, you voted to reject identity politics. But as my old boss, Tony Abbott, reminded us a few years back, the silent majority won't remain a majority if it remains silent. And that's why rejecting the voice and speaking as loudly as you did shows me that so many of you no longer expect the ship just to ride itself, so hence the days of silence are over. To all of you who send me emails and letters and the rest, I am very grateful. I get hundreds a day, hundreds of them, so while I can't respond to everything, I promise you, I read it all. Thank you. We're a, a lean team here at Sky News. There's just three people each day who help me get this show to air. Sometimes it's just two. But the fact that we have been the number one show again this year, like last year and the year before, well, that shows me we hit the mark each night with what we do. And that's in large part thanks to your research work, your advice and your encouragement. To Connor, Will and now Damien, who's just joined us, my Credlin team, thank you. If you asked me when I worked in politics, would I ever end up in the media, I would have said, you're crazy. I think I would have said barking mad. That would have been my exact phrase. But here I am and I won't vacate this chair while so much is at stake for our country and the wider world. To those of you who live outside our capital cities, a special word of encouragement. I grew up in the little Victorian town of Witchy Proof. 
900 people, if that, on the highway between Bendigo and Mildura. And I'm proud to come from regional Australia. And it doesn't matter where I live or what I do, that is where my heart is. I care about our farmers, I care about our country towns. And I want to make sure you know your stories from country Australia are as important to me each night as the news we cover out of Canberra. I have your back, I know you have mine. As we head into Christmas, I hope that every one of you gets to spend time with those you love. And that next year in 2024, we continue the fight back that started this year when so many of us rejected Labor's race-based voice. On Monday the 15th of January, I'll be back on deck at this desk at six o'clock for the Credlin Hour, and I hope that you will again join me. Thank you for your support of me, your support of this show, and the values too that make Australia worth celebrating and defending. From my family to yours, I wish you a very Merry Christmas and a new year where we all strive again to make our country even better.